What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. And today's video will be a continuation in our building a uh, GUI with Kinter in Python and building a playable tic-tac-toe game. So if you missed video one in this series, be sure to check it out. Um, we made a game where uh, right now it just has you select what character you're gonna play as and then draws a start button onto the screen. So we were learning how to create labels and use the grid layout in Kinter, um, as well as create buttons and how to use the command instruction for buttons. So if you haven't checked that out, be sure to go check that out. Um, if you need some basic Python introductions and tutorials on object-oriented programming, be sure to check that series out on the channel as well. And as always, if you find this or any other content useful, I really appreciate a like and a subscribe. It helps the channel out a ton. So what we want to do today is we're going to work on actually drawing the game board and then handling a player's moves as you select um, what button you want to play as. So uh, once you say you want to be X or O, then you have this option to hit start. We're going to go ahead and the next thing we're going to do is draw the game board, which will just be uh, nine buttons in a three by three grid. Um, and let's just go ahead and start doing that. So I'm going to create a function for on the start button and I'm going to call it uh, just draw board. Draw board. Nice. Draw board. And we're going to put that on both start buttons because whether they select X or O, um, it's going to still draw the start button. And so we want it to run this function either way. But now we have to actually go make the function for draw board. So let's go ahead and say draw board. And I'm thinking let's just uh, do it as nine buttons. Um, if we could set up a for loop that's going to run through and do everything for us. But uh, I, I'm just going to define all the buttons here. Um, so let's go ahead and create a table that I'll call positions and to start this is going to be what actually keeps track of like what has been played in each um, in each space and so as either the player or the computer picks um, a space for x's and o's um, it, then we are going to update this table so that it's not just dashes and we'll actually overwrite it with either the player or the computer's character so we just want for now just a string of nine dashes as a placeholder and that'll mean that they haven't been played and then let's go ahead and actually create the buttons I'll call I'm going to use T for top and then L for left and then uh, I'm not even going to say button I'm just going to say top left and we'll make that a button with the text that is going to be equal to our positions table that we just made and then this will be spot zero, right? Um, oh, you gotta say root. Tell it where to draw it first. And since these aren't super complex, um, I'm gonna put the grids uh, right here as well. Um, I, as we talked about in the previous video, a lot of the times it's a good idea to separate out your grid and your um, button definition. Um, but I think that this is gonna work just fine. So let's go ahead and start with row five, column zero. And I'm gonna copy pretty much this whole thing because next we're gonna have top mid. And you can give these um, much longer instruction names uh, if you wanna give them variable names that say actually top, middle, button, or something longer. You can, that's a fine idea. Um, I'm gonna use shorthand so I can do less typing and get through more in this video. So gonna take those three buttons, top, left, mid, and right. Copy them down for middle, left, middle, middle, and then middle, right. And we need to update these from zero, one, two, to three, four, five. We'll keep the columns as zero, one, two, and we'll make the rows six, six, and six. So you can obviously see you could do this with two for loops and do like four I in range nine and then do, um, you know, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two for each of the rows. I might do that in a future video just to show both are valid. Um, but I'm going to do it this way so that we can kind of show the difference in each button. And I also um, 
want to do it this way because they're each going to have a different command, right? So they're all going to um, write to a different button um, with either the player's or the computer's character. So we're going to say the um, command is going to be equal to a function that I'll call player position because if the button's getting pressed, then a person is pressing it. Um, but the problem is I want to just create one function that works for all nine of these buttons and not have um, not have to create nine functions for nine buttons that basically are clones of one another. They just write to a different button. So what we're going to do is we're going to use something that we haven't talked about yet called Lambda. And that's how you actually um, call a function that you then pass in uh, parameters to. Because if you, we haven't talked about this either, but if you... Um, do a command line just like this command equals player position and try to pass in parameters right here it won't let you um, it, it's not uh, valid this way you have to use lambda and then separate it with a colon if you want to do something like that now it's giving us a squiggly red line because we haven't defined the function player position yet so let's do that while we're doing this as well and let's say player position and it's going to take one argument which we'll call position and what we want this to do is uh, we want to update the positions table at the position that we pass in and we want to set that equal to the players character right um, and you see we're getting this red squiggly line because we defined that table inside of the function initially so let's just go ahead and create it in the beginning as well um, so that it can see it inside our position table alrighty so we do the players character there and then um, let's just overwrite whatever button was in that space with, uh, with a new button where now the it's still on the root but now the text is going to be equal to, well, just like before, it's going to be positions at position. Oh, that needs to be square brackets, though. Position, and let's see, I like that, uh, but then let's draw it. And what we're going to do for row and column so that this works for all of them um, we're going to set up, let's do it this way. Let's say column is going to be equal to C and row is going to be equal to R. And let's create some code to handle um, what R and C are going to be equal to. So let's say if position is greater than, position is greater than or equal to uh, zero and less than or equal to two, right? So it's between zero and two. Then we want R which is the row to be equal to zero as well and then else if um, and then let's copy this whole jazz else if the position is between three and five we want the row to be equal to one right and then we could do another l if but since there's only three rows we'll just say row is equal to two um, and then we need to be a little bit more precise in defining column because we can't really use ranges, right? Because the three positions in the table that are going to be in column zero um, are going to be, and I'm just adding spaces for Python syntax. You can leave it if you want. Um, but then let's do if position is positon. Sounds cool if position is equal to zero or and let's do position equal to zero one um, or the third one would be so it's zero one two and then it's three four five and then six seven eight and so that'll make the column equal to zero but then we need to do two more of these right we need to do an l if and then we'll do an else um, just like with the rows so what we're saying now is every third position so zero three six one four seven and this would be two five eight but you can just do it this way uh, that corresponds to the column so now we can make every um, we can make every button call this same function when it's clicked just with their updated position 
So that's what I started doing here. Command equals lambda and player position at, you know, whatever, 0, 1, 2. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this through just to speed things up so you guys don't have to see me do this slowly eight times. Oh, and when we were making the buttons, I actually didn't finish defining these. It stops at five. So this should be six, seven, eight, obviously. Six, seven, eight. This should be seven, seven, seven. And zero, one, two. Then we want three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Got to go back to five. There we go. All right, so I think what we've done here is we've said when the start buttons are pressed, it's gonna draw a board that's just gonna be a bunch of blank buttons to start um, with these dashes in them. And then if we go through and we click, then it's going to update that button with our clicked character. So let's see, X, let's go ahead and start. All right, so we get, and we'll work on making it pretty in the future, but uh, with code, you always wanna make it functional before you make it pretty. So we get this little uh, three by three grid. Let's see. Oh, looks like we maybe defined rows and columns wrong. Let's take a look here. Oh yeah, it's because we're not doing rows uh, zero, one, two. We're doing rows five, six, and seven. So let's try that. X start. Hmm. It appears that we got the columns wrong. So the problem we're getting right now is because I made this just a second if statement. It needs to be an L if statement. Um, that's why the first column wasn't reading properly. Uh, it should be able to scan all three of these now if we just have the L if. So let's go ahead and try that out. X start. Okay, thank goodness. Um, now obviously you're probably noticing a few of the flaws so far you can still change your character mid game the computer's not taking turns and the board is super ugly uh, but we've created a game where um, you know you can uh, draw your characters on so what we'll need to do in the next video is take a look at creating like a computer's turn a turn based system um, as well as blocking it out so you can't change your character mid game and then ultimately we'll be taking a look at win-loss scenarios as well. So for today, we drew our game board and created buttons that update when the player clicks them. So uh, that's pretty cool. Hopefully you found this useful. Stay tuned for the rest of this series where we'll cover the rest of it uh, start to finish. But again, I hope you found this useful. Thanks for checking out the channel. If you do want to see anything in particular in the future or... Uh, have any questions about what you saw today, let me know about in the comments below. Again, I really appreciate a like and a subscribe. It helps the channel out a ton. And as always, good luck with your code and thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.